Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about the love of We may look different and live in different countries, yet our stories are knitted with the same threads of excitement, uncertainties, challenges, and victories. As we journey through the ups and downs of life, it is our undeniable will and God's strength that propel us to joy after pain, smile after frowns, and ups after downs. We were born to win. We were destined to greatness. We are overcomers. Welcome to God's Scoops, Raw and Unedited Stories. Welcome to Raw and Unedited Stories. I am your host, Patricia Daly. Today with us is Mr. Steele. How are you, Mr. Steele? Welcome to Raw and Unedited Stories. Wow. It's, <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's really a pleasure. I've been interviewed before, but uh, this one is going to be epic. Trust me. I'm here live in the living color. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Steele, for coming and sharing your story. Tell us, Mr. Steele, where are you from in Jamaica? Yes. Um, thank you very much. Big up to all the listeners and the viewers all over the world. Okay. I'm from Jamaica, a little parish called Manchester. I live in Greenville. Been living here all my life. My mom, my sisters, and everybody is here. So there's one brother I have died. He died um, 17 years ago. He was my manager, so to speak. Because he believed in my music so much that he took me up on memory. But unfortunately, he died. And um, I've never talked about this story before, to be honest. 17 years ago. And because of that, I, 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 I'm doing this now on my own. I'm doing all this on my own. Because a guy once told me in New York, when I made my first video, that, see that phone in your hand? Use it to the best of your ability. And from this out, me just take that. And this is where I'm at now, on your show. So it's great. Yes. It's yes. crazy, but it's great. You know what I mean? So, yes. Know. So to our listeners, Mr. Steele is a musician. Yeah. One of Jamaica's most unique voice. Wow. I've heard that before. I've heard that before. And I, I, I sorry to cut you. I've heard that before. And I always wonder, but no, I'm appreciating it. I appreciate it now because we really understand this thing and how it how diverse it is to put out music that makes sense and your voice play an integral role in your music because if you have that sound and you know say now nah, captivate the audience where you want to do so people are always saying I'm we must be some angel with that sound because it does sound so I'm, I'm very humble and I feel very good about it. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that Mr. Steele and uh, thank you for sharing your voice with the world and your thank talent. You. Thank yes. you for the world to accept me too just because many voices out there. Everybody's yes. doing music now. So. Yes. And for to our listeners, Mr. Steele has been singing gospel music as well. Mm -hmm. Some real unique tunes and lyrics. Wow. And uh, I just want to take this opportunity to ask Mr. Steele, when did you begin to sing and why? And what are some challenges that you have faced in your life you in know, Manchester? Yes, when it comes to challenges, I'm a determined guy, you know, very determined. You know. Sometimes my mother always says, I'm stubborn. I'm very determined. And I wouldn't say I've faced like a lot of challenges, but the challenge that I would consume being an issue for me is recognition. I always wonder what, what, are, what people are listening for, like producers and and those people in the wider society where you can propel your talent to another level. I wonder what they might listen for. Because I wonder if I just links, if I just links make some people reach a certain goal in the music or I just look. You know, because I sing, I sing very well. And I wouldn't say I'm, I'm the best writer in music because I like to sing and freestyle and something. But 
I sing very well and people always compliment me, my family, them, friends, them. But the, the, the major society people and we can do stuff, them just... Because I've been amongst producers over the years where... We never used to sing so one time, but we get to harness my craft and learn more about it. And you now I do my thing and kind of sound like because I sell some record, you know what I mean? But I still not reach that person there and it, it bothers me. That's one of my challenges in, in my love for me. It bothers me because I feel a little bit hurt sometimes. I, it makes me sometimes feel like I would give it up. Some, but because of my Facebook friends and the social media friends, we encourage me and say, boy, you know, when I sweep my pot, I may just feel good about it. I may say, all right, I'll continue. I sometimes want to stop, but I mean, I love it. So I just continue. Really. So that's yeah. one of the, the stuff that bothers me a lot. I'm sorry to, to, to hear that, Mr. Steele. Yeah. And uh, I just want to ask you, Mr. Steele, if you can just give us one of your lyrics um, or one of your tune, especially in gospel, because yeah. yeah. I have listened to some of your gospel tunes and I find them delightful. So can you give us one? Yeah, man, sure. This song went viral and this is, this, I put out this video in about 20, uh, 2009. 2010, there about when I started Facebook, and it never got any recognition. It was just there sitting, nobody now paid no mind. I'm say, I'm gonna just take it down. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna just leave it. So it's called Let's Talk About Jesus. I record this song not officially for any producer, I just did it of my own will because I had the word, and it was, I'm like a person like this way. If me have a word for a song or a song, I come out and me, me have to sing it, me have to share it, me have to sing it. I just saw me still sometimes. It might beat me in at the end, where the credit is concerned, but we just, we just sing it. You know what I mean? We just sing it. That's some mistake. We now keep it with me. So it's called Let's Talk About Jesus. And it goes like this. Um, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about love. Let's talk about the Savior God. I will shine some up above. Light. Let's talk about Jesus. Talking about love. Let's talk about the Savior God. I will shine some up above. Light of mercy. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So tell me who. Shall I feel? Lay me down in green pastures. He restored. I miss my soul. Oh, love, love, Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about love. Let's talk about the Savior God. I will shine some up above my head. Let's talk about Jesus. Talking about love. Let's talk about the Savior God. I will shine some up above. It's a lot of mercy, boy. Wow. Good job. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Mr. Steele. Yes, tell I, love, I love it. <laughs> yes, man. And the people them say, them love what me hear. What me say, wow. But they don't know it's a technique, you know, of catching your own breath. Is that technique of catching your own breath. So we don't let it out away. So it's come off of that style and them love it. So them always say, wow, when they see me in the street, wow. I mean, I say, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that is what I like to hear too. And that's what put a smile on my face. That's wow. Yeah, man. Well, you see it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. But that style, that technique that I've learned over the years, how to balance. Because I know normally a singer, it's very hard for a singer to sound the same way on a stage than a DJ. You know? So the singer will have some, some style to catch his breath to make his song sound the same. So that's yeah. my style of just doing that. You know what I mean? I don't like to see a singer running out of breath. It's very hard and it's very uncomfortable to see that person in that. You know what I mean? So I just use it to just balance. <laughs> balance the diaphragm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Mr. Steele, tell, yes, tell our listeners and some of your fans, mm -hmm. who is Mr. Steele? Who are you as a person? Steele. My name is Nigel Quelo. I've gotten the name Mr. Steele from, unfortunately, again, Sly and Robbie. Robbie died. Robbie called my virgin with a group, you know, it was Sapphire and Steele. So I was Steele because I'm slim built and the other guy, I like to wear a lot of jewelry. Them called him Sapphire and called me Steele. So Sly and Robbie actually gave us that name in studio at Mixing Lab, Kingston. Back in the day, like I said, I never used to sing like this. I used to sing like backup vocal, harmony. I wasn't so profound in my deep singing. I've learned this over the years to, to do this. Because I used to sing and run out of breath, the same thing, run out of breath. And me never, me couldn't balance it. And my father said to me, say, you need to sing your own song, and then you can balance how you want to bring across your, your, your song. And, and, and because of that, now I learned to, you know, sketch out some song. Because I'm not really a good writer, but I can come up with a punch line for a rhythm, like, just like that. Just by hearing a song, a rhythm play, you can just make up a song, like, right on the spot. But I'm not a good writer in, in, in terms of writing out lyrics and putting them down and, and say, well, the song, the, the, the song I write out, I have to hear the rhythm. Some artists write out song and then they go find the rhythm. It's a different song. I have to hear the rhythm and then I sing the song. Right on spot. Okay. You know what I mean? So the name Mr. Steve come from Sly and Robbie, like I say. And I really appreciate that name because it just stuck for me. Not a group anymore. I'm solo. So I just put the Mr. to it and just become Mr. Steele. A very humble youth, I would say. A little bit. People would have said maybe my bossy. Because me, me love dress up. I love, <laughs> <laughs> love dress up. I love, me love to carry myself well. And, and um, I've learned over the years to speak properly and try to, to, you know, to represent myself in a good form. You know, I feel just chaka chaka. <laughs> I don't like chaka chaka, I don't like fi. You know, say, me not look the part as well. People always see me and say, why well, you look the same way? That's what I see on Facebook. You sound the same way. And sometimes people come on social media with a facade of them being somebody and when they go to the road, they can't even call to them. I mean, me, I'm a people person. People can't talk to me anyway. Me laugh. Me use laughter as my medicine for staying young. Me just laugh. <laughs> me love laugh. I mean, just feel very good when I let that out. I don't say laughter keep you young, so we just do it. So that was me that. Mr. You know? Steele. Yes, ma'am. What is Chaka Chaka? <laughs> chaka Chaka be, if you're an artist and you represent a culture, you have to look the part. A lot of people used to think me a Rasta man, you know. <laughs> we can't go here, because first of all, me don't love hat. Me don't love hat. Me don't love my hat. Me love for cool. So we don't like here. We keep a little goji more time, but we keep a little beer. But we get rid of them quick because more of people for just see me as me. I'm not a pretender. I'm not put on a show. I'm not trying to be this person with them different character. This is just me. We go a little beer now because people say, you know, say I look good, but we soon cut it off. I just saw me stay. Me, me diverse. Me do enough little things to keep myself happy. I love to dance. I love to dance. And I just love to sing. But like me said, I already do gospel music because I feel like me and the master have a connection when we do it that way, you know what I mean? But me look, me do love as Jack, me do good look culture song, but me do nothing slack and out of order and stuff. Because I have boys, you know, me have four boys, and one okay. of you kind of see me as somebody where they can emulate down the road, down the road, you know what I mean? Somebody, some role model, in that sense, you know? And the boys yes. do need that. Mm. Yes. That's noble, Mr. Steele. It's Being a father of four boys. Uh, yep. Four boys. Four boys. My biggest son is 28. My biggest son is 28. He actually got recruited now in Canada. He's going to the to the to the to the recruit station in, in Ottawa this morning. We sent him up this morning, salute him. He live in Canada. He must shave off him beard to kind of have beard like me. So he must be clean shave kind of so the, the navy the navy don't appreciate beard. So we have to and him say he might miss it. So he said us. Make people love you for you, man. Don't be a character for anybody. Just make them love you. Some of the Irish try to be there for my children. You know? Yes. Mr. Steele, I've noticed that you have been singing gospel music and you have not really called yourself a Christian per se, right? Am I correct with that? Right, right, right. Because 
to me, and don't get me wrong, the, the Christian world, I love you all, love Christianity, love that we are here representing, I have to stand up for something. And I know that there's a calling for me, you know, sometimes, God, God is my father, and somebody with him like father. You know, so we as children, we misbehave, and we, we do some stuff, and we have to ask for forgiveness. So I don't want to be one of those people where go inside to the master and then know. Me a peep, one one kind of one one door. Me not believe that. Me feel like me feel like sometimes it's so we are so vulnerable when we become Christians in that sense, and then now it, it somebody at 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 this track you. I, we keep on a, I feel, and we have to ask for forgiveness. Me no love to say too much. I'm sorry, and me not do it again. And then we keep on a do it, and then me not do it again. And so me just feel like say me I work for him still. But me don't put on the budget, but we still are sure say me are your soldier, I'm out there, I, I, I do your work, and me just want you to love me because I'm your son, you know? Me don't want him to say me are one of the misbehaving son. A lot of people would call themselves black sheep and stuff like that, which I don't really consider misbehaving as a black sheep in any family realms. But just, just go to him loyal and just go to him real because we are humans and we make mistakes. And, I just don't want to go in there and then be tempted with the world. The world is crazy, I mean. And it, it, it dry out as a quint. <laughs> it dry out as a quint and you have to fight and turn over on them something. So I guess that's why me not really convert myself to being a Christian born like this and so. But it's, it's getting there. It's getting very close because I want my children them to follow suit because that's one of the things where I hesitant about having children. And then now you are Christian and then you're chilling them out there. That's come like you drive and you're chilling them on the chunk. Me, me want my children them to come in with me, but me want them to learn about it themselves. So me just beg God to keep me humble and stable that me can watch them grow, that they reach a certain age that me and them can go in together. Because we were born of this world and we're not perfect. And we just feel like we don't want to go in there for mislead the church or mislead people and nothing. somebody just tell them say i'm a man of god i love the almighty but i try to keep myself on a level where it's not too much of the world but it's more of what god say yeah. somebody just try we try our best mr steel yes ma'am your song the lyric let's mm -hmm. talk about jesus yeah let's talk about love talk, right god, god is love right but Tell me some of the things that you like about Jesus that really attract you to him. Because, what, because what is it about his word that really attracts you? There's no way on earth you can be living and not giving thanks. The, to me, I think it's impossible. So a lot of times when I see a lot of youths and, 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 and people just going about just doing them things and, and what them all do and they go but go do that on me. I'm not a person that look at long term. We don't know why. We just live for the moment. I'm going to give thanks for the moment. Right? We are talking right now. And this is my love. What we are talking about now, him pleased about it. So I look at it and say, if we are talking about him in even this interview, he's pleased. So I try to do things to please him. That's why I pray every morning. I never have to do it. I have to pray and I have to share my prayer on my social page. Because I tell, I tell the people, I say, I never grew up, sir. I never used to pray. I never grew up and pray and them something. I used to just naive and like everybody else. And as I grew up, but I realized, say, you know, but, 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 you know, I have to give them for something, man. That I mean, I can't just go through the world off and luck and people get up in the mind and say, oh, but we can't go and I walk. I mean, I look at this stuff like that. I kind of look at this and say, Father, thank you. And please, to this guy, Mr. step for the rest of the day. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, you know? Because you can't go into the world and be afraid of the world or things, you know. You have to live, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid, but you still have to give reverence to a master. Just like we're in the world and we have to, the things that we are happening, how we pay attention to the things that we are happening. Or we not pay attention to what we are not seeing. Just, just because we are seeing the things that we are happening, we are pay attention to the, the, the TV and the... We have to pay attention to what we are seeing too. Because a lot of times somebody is paying attention to us. We are yeah. doing little things, but, 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 but they must see we. They must yeah. see we. Some spirit has seen we, some, somebody has seen we. And a, maybe, maybe them block you. Sometimes you feel like I look, and maybe I just him black your ass, and I don't know why. It's a You just never know. You just never know. We have to keep him close. You know what I mean? Mr. Steele, yes. I've once heard that 
people who know and fully surrender to Jesus, they have that peace, a peace that they can't even explain. And when life challenges come, that is what that keeps them going. Do you think you're missing out on that? And why? Well, I don't think I'm missing out because trust me, me see where God bless me, I make me smile enough time. God bless me in so many ways that me see it, and him just I say, go and do your thing, man. But me I watch it because like me say, me pay attention to. Is that a mind thing where you make up things in your mind? Me see things, me literally see it in front of me, I mean, no say I am it. I tell you what, when I went when I went to the embassy the first time, let me show you how God poured through. This is just a, one of many, but this one got my attention so many times that me think about it. I was going to the embassy one morning about four o'clock. You know, so when you have one eight o'clock appointment, they have left man at like four o'clock. Now you don't have left so quick because you have the highway now where you can reach yeah, one hour now, but you know, go to porous and them something they take you like one couple of hours. But anyway, when I went to the toll booth, me and my cousin, I remember, I'm a PM to if you go to, and the guy don't know me, I got you. <laughs> we still have to laugh. You don't know where I go. Can you know you go to the embassy, you're private with you. Can you know, nobody feel like you're going you to tell nobody and then you know, get there and then you're shame. Because it's a very private thing. It's a my thing with the embassy thing. But anyway, and I was going for it and I'm pay my boot and the guy said, Morning, sir. I'm going to go, sir. Morning, morning. And, and I'm going to take my chin and I'm going to go, Great blessings ahead. I'm going to say, Hey, yeah, yes, man. I'm a driver, I'm a driver, I'm a look for my cousin, and my cousin look for me, and I say, but my cousin not take it randomly. I say, you have to pay attention to the words which sometimes other people say. Because we have angels walking amongst us, you know. We have people that God speaks to, you know. And just because we sometimes not uh, pay attention, we just uh, do our own thing, because we get egotistical sometimes, uh, in our own way, nobody can tell you nothing. But sometimes you have to listen to even the guy on the street, but even the same man, you know. You have to sometimes say, what do you say? Him come in a diversity, him come in a hope of ways that you have to just... Me tell you, say, nothing not miss me. Me see so many things. And like me say, I went there and I got it. I went there and me get it. And me see a lot of people with documents, folders. And I just went there with just me and just me look a passport and... I me just get it. And some people go there prepare. So sometimes even when you prepare, you're still not going to see him because you're still do something wrong. You're doing something wrong where you don't pay attention to. So as, as I said, I'm not a Christian because you have a lot of Christians that say stuff and they're doing other things. I mean, we all see, we know. So it's not about the word, I think, it's about the person you know, and your person. Yes. So Mr. Steele, my question is, uh, do you think you, do you have a special calling? Do you think the Lord has a special calling on your life? Because I know that there are many, many people who are Christians who love God. And they said long before they even gave the heart to Jesus, the Lord was calling them. Do you, think, do you feel that God is calling you? I don't think he's calling me, but he's paying attention to me. In love, when he and in the side, tell me, say, this is what you need to do. Come and follow your rules, you know. I'm not a bad guy, you know. I'm not a guy that I think first time, like when I'm in my 30s, I really kind of really, really never really care. I maintain my youth, you know, I got my first child when I, when I was 27. So in my 30s, you know, I say, yes, done father now. So I don't mean a thing, but 35, 40, I kind of did that. You know, Baba and we, Baba and we, we never sure what is this God idea and stuff like that. You know, me, me know say there's a God, but me never really I pay attention to nothing. Me just live and I do me thing. But in my late forties now going down, you know, it was a struggle because my son was two at the time and um I'm a single father from that time up to now my son is twelve. You know, so I've, I've never learned how to cook. I never learned how to wheel and wash. I never learned how to do a lot of things. And I've learned everything now. And it, it, right now, I close me, I fall up. <laughs> I fall up close. I do a sort of something for me, you, because you start school the 5th of September. So, you know, you know, big respect to him, mother, see me, mother, pay a good role in, in him life to see me. But I me, mean, have him. And it taught me a lot to be a parent, how to express my love 
My son tell me that he loves me every day. And and I think based on how I am, that's how he just attract it to me. So he just saw where he just saw me do and he just apply it. He tell me he loves me every day. Sometimes he want to hug me up in a butt. We hug him up in a butt. I, I think we grow with that. We never grow really with hugs. Because my father, we never really hear my father tell me say I love me still. But we know that he loves me. But he never said he wasn't an expression. Expressionist. What do you call it? You know, you know <laughs> expressive. Yes, expressive, right? expressive, yes. So, my father grow without a father. So, he grow kind of more reserved. And he never really, he never really get a lot of love. So, him, but in at the end, I was with him right through to the end. And when he, before he died, um, he told me right outside, I was bringing him to the hospital one Monday. And he said, he just said, can you call me Mr. Steele in him, don't call me Nigel. <laughs> He call me Mr. Steele. We say, everybody get used to the Mr. Steele. It's my mother. Call me Mr. Steele. And my father said to me, say, it's your time now, you know. I me used to me, I wonder why he said that, but he never come back out of that. He died the Tuesday. And I never get to see him again. And he never worries some because me and him did have a, a, a good relationship in the, in the later part. In the early part, it wasn't so good. But in the later part, it, it was good because I mean, him laugh and and chat and laugh and, and then him build and I used to trim him. So me and him good. So I learn a lot from my father and I learn a lot from my mother. But I live with my father for most of my life. Mr. Steele, yes, what are some aspirations or dreams you have as a musician and as a you, person? You know say you know say I asked myself that question there and chat with me don't know you get where I ask me. I mean me I never talk about it. We don't know when I ask myself this, what I want out of this music. So by the time I do it, you know, but I think we just love the joy and the, you know, when first time you used to dance for food, you know, when I used to, used to dance for food, because we used to eat a lot, we don't know, we never put our weight, when we used to eat a lot, or we used to like my parents, we might eat certain food, we used to just sort of go dance and they go, say, hey, <laughs> give me it. So I love credit. I love credit. I love when I do something good, you say, you know, so you sound good, I like it. But I like when I know so I do it very well and then you still nag give me. I feel, I take offense to it. Because anybody we, we can tell you, if, if you ask me if you don't pay, I give you, I don't ask you about the money, me give it. But when I give it to you, and it, you know, say it's sound good, and you tell me say it's sound good. And you know, you know, and you keep it to yourself. I don't like people like that. I like when you do something good, you must. It must be rewarded. It must even by words, not even by money, but by words. I say, that's why I mean, everything my son do, I always say, bro, that you, you just keep it up, and because I think that strengthens you and give you a confidence to, to move forward. But when you just then do something special and you just make, just move, me can't. But I think you knock them down and you make them feel like them not worth nothing. You know? So we love credit. We love credit. We love it. Bad, bad, bad. Mr. Steele, how can somebody get your music? I mean, I don't have any platform that I stream it from, unfortunately. Everybody beat me all the time and say, we need your music to buy. <laughs> we want it to buy. But because I do most promotional songs, it's kind of hard. I don't want to sell anybody's product. I can't use people with him and go sell it. I'm not that. I don't, don't know. I just honest like that. I now go go under the map and try to cheat somebody of them with him and stuff but if i get a personal rhythm of mine that i could release then i'll definitely try to put it on some website and make them stream it and pay for it but to me the joy of just you loving it like me say it does it does exceed the fact that the money is 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 there it's like the money not relevant to me but when i say me don't want the money you don't want it we want it everybody want money but we love the, just the credit that you give me I hate my work with that. I don't know if I'm me, me naive or I'm stupid. I don't love the credit from me, me get. More than the money, you know. Mr. Steele, from speaking with you, yeah. I am gathering that you are a man of integrity, a great father. Wow. And I'm also gathering that God has a plan for you. And I, and I, would, I want you to tell me at this moment, how do you plan to respond to his call on your life? Well, trust me. Um, like I say, I see all of the callings and I miss all of the, the things and what, what he's doing and stuff. And I'm not far from it. But like I say, 
I'm a family person and I I want to I want to bring my, my kids. But we have to pray over them and hope for the best for them that they can even go off away them, see with you and then them just pack on the same thing. Because you said what you are youth, I went to my school my son at school yesterday and when I saw the children them coming out, appear metaphor them are you with some language where I say if, you are, if them just left school and them are you, them are language in front of my youth, when I try to teach a certain way, then the youth them are so vulnerable to, to, to society and what society has pushed upon them. So I just beg God to keep me, that we can make, that we can watch them grow, and then we, then we try to harness them into the same reverence. That means, I would love to have a baptism of, of all five of us at one time, and then them, them can choose whether or not them can do after that. But in the meantime, I talk to them about it, but them not fully understand. My bigger son understand, but the other one them not. Two, my son not live with me, kind of difficult. The other children, the other youth, them not live with me neither. We only have two here, and it's kind of hard for me to maneuver them in that pressing. I don't want to. I was, I was, I was forced to go to church. And my, mother, never, my mother never used to say it when I feel like I should have gone. Because our mother said, my mother, one of God, I church, I know. I mean, if I never like that. That demand, go on, come, me go on, me ask them, sir. And me, me not go learn none because me go, I want to tell you this. I saw the pastor of my church the other day. And she inboxed me and said, Mr. Steve, we need to talk. So that's another sign. And that me I try to tell you, the God come to certain vines. And you kind of look at like the pastor too. <laughs> Andrew Memorial. Andrew Memorial. She said, I need to talk to you. You, know. you need to call me. I'll be the call her. I'll be the dash around. That's around, I don't call her. Like, I'm coming, know exactly what she had to talk to me about. And I saw her, we saw her at a fun day, we put her on by the church. And she said, Mr. Steele, and, and the power, of, when me and she greeted up, man, it was a power, and I felt the power. You know, when you get, when you get goosebumps, and, yes. but the funniest thing, as a pastor, she was listening to me, because I was speaking like this to her. Because she had said, I follow you all the time on your, on your page, you know, and, you're such a motivation, and I mean, I said, I start talking to her. And she said, You need to come check me out by the church, but we don't check her yet. But I got check her, I got check her, I got check her. I mean, I'm telling, I'm telling you, I got check her. Yes, Mr. Steele, yes, I'm so thank you for taking the time out to share on God's scope. And I've never talked like this before, you know. We never, we never, we never, we never, we never. You, you get my vulnerability. No, no, we can't manage this. Can't <laughs> and manage before, manage before we leave, I just yes. want to ask you to give us a short, a brief word to our single fathers. In the society, we're just struggling, struggling to make ends meet and grow boys and even girls. Just use this forum to do that. Wow. Well, I must say this. A lot of times people, when they give people advice, they don't want to take it. Because we grow a certain way, we grow different. Everybody grows different in their own way. But this is just me talking based on my experience. And as a father of four boys, it's not easy. It's, it's crazy. So many, So much work. But guess what? Sometimes you have to look behind that because at the end of the day, we also need somebody in the last part to take care of us. And boys are so... I mean, girls are easily drawn into the, the negative part of society too. But boys, we have to hold on to our boys. Just, and then when we hold on to our boys them and teach them how to treat the girls, then we have a better society. So fathers, other father, to fathers, spend time. With, with them. I don't believe in the Western Union, baby. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in the money gram, baby. I mean, I don't believe in the granny, baby. Like you left your pit with the granny or auntie and cousin. You, you spend the time. Guys, when you spend the time with them, you know, you know them, you know. You know when they're sick. You know when they're happy. You know when they're sad. No matter nobody have to give you a phone call to say, Michael, no feel good. John, no feel good. Dorothy, no feel good. You try to do that. Sometimes it kind of hard because we have to work. But you see, if I'm seven days a week, if I even take three days, if you spend the time with them. If you're overseas, continue to do what you do. 
But at the end of the day, just try to do your best with them and dialogue with them. We have phone now, we can call them. No excuse are there again. Give them a look at phone and you can talk to them. Just get involved with them. Because when you talk to them, then we hear you. My kids grew up in the same community as me. And once me hear my youth voice, me know. If my youth come out of a taxi, me know. Me feel it. And that's how I know that parents and mothers feel when they give birth. They feel the children. Me can't feel my youth. If my youth get natural, me can't feel it. Me don't know there's something right. I try to have every teacher number, principal number, school number. Just get involved. And don't do your best. Let me say it's not easy because a lot of the time we are selfish parents because we tend to feel like children are hold back and they can't go on the way they do money. All right, about this. No. Mm -mm. Somebody said the other day no child was asked to be born. None. How we get them? I think I went somewhere and heard that speech because me remember speech that me can learn from to you know, some mistake as a person. So, fathers. Do your best. It's hard. I may have stress on the hard part, but at the end, it I got victorious because my son tell me saying love me every day. Every day. One of my son gone on vacation now. And when I call him every day, I say to him, I just tease him and I say, you know, saying I love me again. He said, no, man, I love you always. And my son, my bigger son just texted me a while ago. Say, love you too, daddy. So, and the boys, and the, the free, if you tell the boy, them say I love them. And I call them a boy. How you man? Yes. So, big up on yourself, fathers. Do your best. Once again, Mr. Steele, it's yes. great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank for you very sharing much. Sharing with us on raw and unedited stories. I feel, so good. I feel so good. Trust me. You make my Saturday. You make my Saturday. Love it. Thank Love you. It. And to our listeners, Thank you for tuning in to Raw and Unedited Stories on God's Scoop. And if you have a story to share, click the link below. And remember, have a phenomenal day.